As before, we obtain the velocity by differentiating the displacement. The differential of a sine is a cos, so the phase of the velocity is 90 degrees ahead of that of the displacement. The maxima and minima of velocity occur when the displacement is zero. Now it's obvious why the velocity is proportional to a. To cover a bigger amplitude, the object must travel faster. The chain rule of differentiation gives us an extra factor of omega. The physical reason is obvious. Large omega means a short period, and a cycle completed in a shorter time requires greater velocity. Differentiate the velocity, and we have the acceleration, which is proportional to the displacement, of course, but out of phase by 180 degrees. The acceleration has a maximum when the displacement has a minimum, and vice versa. Again, the chain rule gives us an extra factor of omega. If the cycles are half as long, the velocity is not only twice as great, but it also changes from positive to negative twice as often, whence the extra factor omega. Conversely, if we double the period, the object has twice as long to cover the same distance, so the velocity is halved. Further, it's only changing its direction half as often, so the acceleration is reduced by a factor of four. Before we go to look at another example, let's compare simple harmonic and circular motion. In both of them, a factor of omega appears in the velocity, and omega squared appears in the acceleration, as of course is required by the dimensions. The strong dependence of acceleration on frequency is especially important in vibration, as we'll see next. Looking at these plots of displacement, velocity, and acceleration, we can see the physics behind their shapes. The force, and therefore the acceleration, is zero at equilibrium. The force is maximum when the springs are most compressed or most extended. The velocity is a maximum at the moment when the force and the acceleration change sign, going from acceleration to deceleration. Note the different phases. Acceleration is 90 degrees ahead of velocity, which is 90 degrees ahead of displacement. Obviously, the potential energy is greatest when the springs are maximally compressed or maximally extended, and the kinetic energy is a maximum when the speed is greatest. These energy terms are 180 degrees out of phase. Let's look at the total mechanical energy E. Using the expression for omega, and the identity, cos squared plus sine squared of an angle equals 1, we show that the mechanical energy is constant. Energy is regularly being exchanged between kinetic and potential. This pendulum illustrates the phenomenon of resonance. An oscillating system can store energy at one or more resonant frequencies. With a series of small pushes at the correct frequency, the oscillator stores a lot of energy. I can't throw him that high. However, it only works for some frequencies. Pushing at a random frequency doesn't have the same effect. Here we have one massive pendulum coupled via the supporting rod to several pendulums of different lengths, therefore different frequencies. To you, which one will resonate and absorb energy from the massive pendulum? Resonance systems can sometimes absorb energy from a non-vibrating source. Here, I am blowing at a steady rate, but a non-linear interaction converts a small fraction of the energy into oscillation. Here, the oscillation frequency is high enough for us to hear it as a note. 